I'm Daniel Josego. Originally, I'm from a little seaside town in the south of England called Chichester. It's got a similar vibe to St. Peter's Port, actually, but, you know, ever so slightly smaller and less picturesque. I moved to London 20 years ago to study art, and, yeah, I'm now based in London. The core sort of values of a lot of my work is... The, the whole body of work really is about value and, you know, in this day and age, I think we're at sort of a crossroads where a lot of the, the key things that used to hold us together as a society are sort of a bit more fluid now, you know, sort of religion and Christianity perhaps is not the, the driving force in our society that it once was. And a lot of the morals that, whether you're religious or not, a lot of the morals that we kind of uphold as how we should live day to day are defined by that religion. So if that religion is no longer there, then do we still need these morals? If we don't need these morals, then what should our morals be? What, what should we value and how should we value it? So I'm kind of, yeah, that's kind of an underpin of a lot of my work and, you know, sort of what's important. And, you know, as I say, I'm not kind of some overriding genius who sort of knows all these answers. So I, I frame a lot of my questions about those through art and about how to be an artist because you know, the whole adage that art imitates life and life imitates art. So if I make art that is exploring those themes, by extension, it's exploring it in the wider world as well. So David got in contact with me, would you be interested in this? And, you know, I'm, or I'm interested in doing anything basically that gets new people to see my work. I love what I'm doing and I want everybody else to see it. So he got me to, well, and Oleg, of course, to come over to Guernsey and we spent two weeks yeah exploring the islands um i mean yeah it's a fascinating place i was aware of it to hugo's work i knew a little bit about his life i knew nothing about horteville house i didn't even really know it existed until um david kind of mentioned it and then i looked into it and it looked very interesting and i went there and you know little little snapshots on the internet can't do it justice really it's um it's mind-blowing place to see um to see an artist be sort of so immersed in what he's doing that he kind of he's not only creating piles of you know literature that is stands the test of time but he also found the time to build a house that is in itself a work of art and the level of intricacy that's in that building is incredible kind of you know the the outside is quite uh quite sort of minimalist and sort of quite austere and then you open the door and it's like you know someone let off a, a double barrel shotgun of creativity in your face and so I mean, there was a lot of reading to do up front. Um, I mean, you know, read some of his, obviously his main works, uh, Les Mis, and the one that really grabbed me was The Toilers of the Sea. I mean, being that I was in Guernsey, and that's the book that he kind of wrote about Guernsey, it seemed like a natural kind of place to start. Um, and yeah, and did the whole a series of pieces kind of exploring that narrative. I mean, for me, that book is um, it's quite, a, it's an interesting book. I liked it because it's kind of a Greek, epic but kind of told in an 18th, 19th century romantic novel you know the, char the characters are quite thin they're sort of um, the mind kind of like ciphers for these sort of heroic archetypes you know he's got this sort of fisherman who's sort of the tragic romantic kind of you know hero and even he alludes at the start of the story to his heritage not being you're not sort of sure who is whose parent you know where his parents have come from and kind of yeah so I sort of played on that and then I sort of paralleled that book two um, you know, Greek sort of narratives and came up with a series of drawings which I was pleased with. There's little um, sort of touchstones that you can see of kind of um, sort of famous sculptures, uh, classical Greek sculptures and um, um, also in fact the, the final piece in the series, the, uh, the sailing of the Kashmir, the um, Gillette, is it Gillette? Right. It's one of those names I've only ever seen written down. Uh, sitting on a rock and I've actually channeled the famous Rodin sculpture from um, Victor Hugo's funeral, you know, kind of, of him sitting on the rock. So that's kind of trying to sort of parallel that there as well. In the fourth drawing in the series, kind of when the hero is off to the rescue, I've sort of channeled um, a famous composition that's been used repeatedly throughout Renaissance art, which is the uh, Perseus and Andromeda sort of uh, myth, where Perseus, the, you know, cut and paste Greek hero, is basically going off to fight the Kraken and Andromeda, the princess, is sort of um, chained to a rock as the sort of bait for the kraken. And if you, you know, I mean, there's a, several paintings, famous compositions where the, I've sort of mirrored the same composition, except I've got my hero in a little rowboat instead of on the back of a, um, 
a Pegasus. Uh, um, and obviously, instead of the Kraken, I've got the smoking hulk of uh, the, the ship. Yeah. And then the, uh, the fifth piece in the series, which is kind of the, the action shot, is uh, I've channeled uh, Lao Kun and his sons, the sculpture, where uh, obviously Lao Kun gets attacked by the, the snakes. And instead, I've translated that to the octopus, but I've tried to capture the same sort of energy of that sort of life and death struggle. And I mean, the, well, the composition as a whole is also channeling Gustav uh, Dora, who was, you know, a seminal 19th century illustrator. Um, yeah, and he did a whole series of um, Victor Hugo works. He did The Hunchback of Notre Dame, he did Les Mis, he did, um, and he did The Toilets of the Sea. So I've tried to sort of capture the composition that he used as well. So, you know, trying to sort of show where the, the heritage of the piece is coming from, really. But um, So I have two books full of ideas, and then generally you have half an idea, and then at some point I'll come up with another half of idea, and these two bits click together like Lego and then the, the piece is ready and I know what, what it's going to be. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't use pencils when I'm drawing, I just use the pen, so I spend a lot of time in my head. I know, I know pretty much what this is going to look like, so it's just a case of executing. So a standard size drawing can take me, if it's flowing nicely, can take me three days. Sometimes they can be an absolute, and it can take me three weeks. But um, I mean, this one, uh, uh, my main sort of piece for the Guernsey, the, um, the house that Hugo built, is taking me about six weeks to draw. Just because, I mean, yeah, I've, I've kind of ramped up everything for this sort of project. Uh, I've ramped up the scale to a scale that I've never drawn on before. The detail, everything, you know. I've gone spinal tap, I've turned it up to 11. So coming towards the end of the Guernsey sort of timetable, it was in the middle of the night when I was working on the Toilers of the Sea series that suddenly all the little pieces started to click together for this big drawing. Um, I mean, it just, it's sort of a kind of, as I say, reading more literature about him, I think it seems to me that there are three sort of buildings that were very important in his life. You've got Horterville House, which he obviously spent 15 years throwing so much passion into, and it's remarkable that it stood the test of time. And then you've got the um, Notre Dame Cathedral, which you know, he kind of, I mean, we all talk about it like it's an amazing, you know, this, this big thing, but if he hadn't wrote that novel, it was not sure that it would have been the place that we all sort of know it as today. And then the other one is the Arch de Triumph, where he had his funeral. Um, and so what I've tried to do is I've tried to sort of capture the grandeur of those three buildings. And I'm actually also referencing uh, a famous uh, print by Albert Dürer, which is called the Triumphant Arch. It was to do with... Um, Maximilian the first, I believe, who is or was the um, Holy Roman Emperor, uh, and it's basically celebrating his life, and it's covered in details about, you know, his conquests and what he did and stuff like that. And I wanted to sort of channel that into this, basically. So you've got this giant sort of structure with you know elements of those three buildings in it, but then also channeling in and touching on, well, his life, his literature the house and just layering up all these different things that I took from took from Victor Hugo.